Hello. Robin Burton called me from work in Collinsville, Illinois today. Her smile hiding cautious optimism. Um, this one says that she was at, it's a grocery store kind of place that they sell groceries and like clothing or little odds and ends. It's called Fred. Fred Myers, are you familiar with that? The tip tied specifically to the Gateway Fred Meyer is about her mom, whose photo sits at the top of this page, titled Missing and Homeless. Burton started this in 2015 to help others sharing her struggle. Nobody notices a homeless person. They're invisible to the, to the human eye. You know, you've got your kids that, are, that suffer from addiction. You have families that um, suffer from mental health. That's the case, says Burton, with her mom, Claudia Leslie Wells, seen here in an age progression photo posted on the Facebook page. She suffers from paranoid schizophrenia, says Burton, and she's been missing since the mid-90s. For years, Burton yeah. felt helpless finding yeah. her mom. That is, until 2014, when the LA Times did a story on local homelessness. It included this photo, captioned with a different name. But Burton, who says her mom has changed her name before, was sure it was her. She later confirmed her mother's social security number had been registered with a local shelter. God don't send you a picture after 20 years for no reason. But by the time Burton got to California, her mom was gone. So she started this Facebook page, mainly looking for help in her own case. It blew up. Now she gets five or six new requests a day. People from across the U.S., even Europe, looking for missing loved ones who they believe may be homeless in various cities. These are just a handful. Burton posts these photos and information as long as it comes with a police report. She estimates she's helped locate more than 100 people. I had um, a guy that got found and his family thought that he was murdered that somebody had murdered him. The one person she hasn't been able to find? Her own mom. Today's tip, she hopes, will change that. I have got people right now sending things into Portland to some of some of the shelters. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find all the street outreaches because our street outreaches, the, those that volunteer out on the streets and give out hygiene products and food and clothing, those are our eyes because those are the ones that can tell us if they're there. In the meantime, Burton will keep working on other cases. The work and the success stories are hard. It makes me happy and it gives me hope. But at the same time, you know, you're like, why can't I find my mom? You know, it'll be 24 years. I'm not giving up. Oh. And you just heard for us. So today I reached out to various agencies asking what they can do to help, including Transition Projects, Central City Concern, and the Joint Office of Homeless Services. And one answer I got a lot was that they have to get reports from police. And we checked with Portland Police. At this point, they don't have any record of Burton's mom here, but they also add this situation isn't uncommon. They get a few calls like this every single month. And Burton says, guys, that she understands that. And she says a lot of people come to the page because they've gone to police and entirely well-meaning police say, you know, your relative is an adult. They don't have an address. And in some cases, they just flat out don't want to be found. And their relatives are left sitting at home just worrying day and night about what's Terrible. happening. Yeah. 24, so 24 years. That just hurts your heart to, to hear her. I hope she finds her. I do too.